Hi everyone. Want your Yesu VX6 to be an APRS radio? Then keep on watching. We are going to configure the mobile linked uh, TNC3 with the Yesu uh, VX6. This device will help us receive and transmit APRS packets through this radio and then display those packets on the phone. The important thing right now is that we need to configure the TNC3 and to do that we're going to need some software. Um, and we're going to lower this down a little more. So here this, uh, when, it, when they give you the unit, this right here is the, um, what they call that, the guide to, um, you know, program your TNC, uh, TNC, right? TN, TNC3. All right. So here you have the software um, to program your TNC. You have your iOS device and your Android uh, software. So, what uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to use my iOS device. The guide doesn't tell you how to use the iOS device, unfortunately, but, you know, it does help you. So, you should have the uh, guide open. So, the first thing you need to do, well, for, we're going to turn this off first. Um, what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to get remove the antenna for now because it's easier to access this port, right? The audio port where you put your um, microphone and this cable, I was, uh, I bought this cable from the uh, mobile link shop. I uh, believe it's $13. It's not cheap, but um, the hardware, the hardware is 120. So, if I'm buying the hardware from them, I might as well buy the cable from them too uh, to make sure everything fits nicely. And you can see this, it has those threads. And those threads are just like the microphone. So I'm going to um, screw it in there. It's kind of weird for a phone jack. And it's nice and snug there. Then I'm going to put the antenna back. I love this antenna. This is the uh, Diamond SRH. 320A. This is the tri-band one. This radio is awesome, by the way. This uh, Yesu VX6. Um, it's my, one of my first radios. Uh, I'm still new to him, and I still love the radio. Okay. And then, uh, maybe we should have it like this, this way, so that this line don't doesn't cross the antenna. They're saying that that might interfere. Sometimes you have to put a bead or something. And then you pop this in, nice and snug. Okay, good. And um, as you can see, you can also see the interface on the screen as, as well over here, uh, what buttons I press and how this is reacting overall. Get a sense of what's, what I'm doing. I'm gonna turn this on. And I'm going to type a different address. I'll go to 144650. That's the address that usually nobody's in in my area. I'm going to need that because I'm going to be testing some things. Okay, so this is the device. That's the, the um, uh, power button right here. And you press on it once, it turns green, and then it blinks blue meaning it's disconnected, um, but it's kind of like in the standby mode. It's like turned on, basically. And then you can press it one more time, and it just turns it off. Um, the switch, I wish it was just a regular switch, on or off. Uh, this can easily be bumped uh, in a bag or something. But, okay, that's... We're going to talk about a few things in the end of... Towards the end of this video... I'm going to talk about things that I discovered that I was doing wrong and then uh, maybe that might help you because this is not an easy process um, doing this. 
All right, we're going to turn this on. Okay, and then we're going to go to the app. And again, the app, you can download the app and then the guide, right, through this. So here's the app. And there is our TNC3 device. If it doesn't show up here, quit this, turn it on again, or go to the... Um, Go to your Bluetooth settings, see if you can see it there. Uh, the first time I did this, it wasn't showing up, um, but eventually it will. You know, quit, turn it on, turn this on, quit, maybe, or even leave it alone. You got to fidge with it a little bit, but eventually it'll get there. All right, so we're here. Finally, we can see it. It's going to say, hey, uh, apparently uh, connecting to the TNC with an active connection can prevent it from... Receiving and transmitting packets. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, connect. Let's do it. Okay. Bluetooth pair? Yes. Perfect. So now it's paired up with my Bluetooth device. That's beautiful. So I, I didn't have to even do anything with, with that. So I'm looking at the guide here. And I am looking at this uh, user guide here. And I'm at uh, configuring the TNC. Okay, and so uh, apparently we, we can look at the power settings. So let's do that. And we have uh, 4,165 millivolts. Okay. So uh, when you uh, first use it, you should charge it all the way up. <clears throat> As you can see, it's blinking twice, blink, blink, blue which means very quickly means Bluetooth is, is uh, on. So that's a good thing. And apparently you can power on the USB or power off. You can read the manual for more info on that. Okay, great. So we're cool there. So the whole idea of power settings is, do we have battery on this device, the TNC? Yes. Okay, now we're gonna go with the mo modem setting. So this is cool because we're doing um, a Mac, I guess. There is no mode modem configuration at all. It's blanked out. So that's perfect. That uh, we don't need to deal with that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to configure the receive volume. So it's receiving packets, right? The radio. And then it's going to have to go to our TNC 3. I'm gonna call them. A, I'm gonna call this a modem, because that's I'm old school, and the sounds that come from APR, APRS sounds like one of those old school modems. So I'm gonna call the TNC a modem. Okay, from now on. So the signal comes to it. If it's too loud for the modem, it's not going to be able to translate very well um, the information. If it's too soft. If it's not loud enough, again, it's not going to be able to do anything for us. So we have to adjust it, and the software is going to do that for us. So we're going to go to audio input, right? And for handhelds, and remember this video is more for about the, v, uh, the Yaesu VX6, but for handhelds, apparently you put it at zero, and then you want to put it at 6 dB. And then... Um, you should put a frequency that nobody listens to. We're not going to transmit, but put it in a frequency that usually people are not transmitting. It's a good practice. Uh, you want your antenna, most likely. And then for this radio, we have a PTT button, a squelch button. We want the squelch button, okay? So we're going to click and hold. And you know that this is green. It means it's doing something. And you can see... The audio input levels are low. We need it so that it says, um, if you can, uh, let's see, adjust the volume on the radio until the volume meter lights up to the rightmost level indicator. Okay. So if you look at the manual, it, it doesn't look like this because we're doing an iOS. So we're going to be doing some assumptions here. Red probably means no good. So... This is all the way to zero, and I'm going to write this is all the way to zero, right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move one notch. 
uh, you can see that it is moving a little more, another notch. Ah, now we got a green. That must be, that must mean it's good, right? And it's almost to the right. And if we go one more, now it's red. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see what happens. Now it's red and not orange. Did I say orange, green? Uh, red, red and green. I'm going to go up one more. Another level. Uh, okay. Right there. It looks like it. Right? So that's what? One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two. If I put it at two, that looks like that's enough, isn't it? It looks like it. It's if it's um, enough. I mean, it's almost to the right, right? But if I click more, it looks like that's fine as well. Well, I'm gonna go all the way down, and it says for it says for most all handheld radios, the input gain level should be at zero, and the TNC has the ability to amplify low-level audio inputs. Typical for mobile radio data ports, okay. Well, anyway, it looks like in this case, one, two, two um, notches. And it's really close to the green. We're going to try that. And if that doesn't work, we're going to pump it up more. When I did this, I'm going to let this go. When I did this last night with my iPad, I had it in the middle. But then again, you know, this could be a different situation. Um, I don't know. But um, I remember also using audio adjust levels and I didn't do it. I didn't do it this time. All right. So again, we press on the squelch button. And it looks like we're, we are we are pushing over almost to the to the end of the right side with green. So that looks good. And we're still blinking here, blue light, and then we'll go back. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next one. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to configure the transmit volume, which means when the TNC3 is ready to send out a beacon, then uh, the radio this needs to know how to communicate to the radio properly and send out that beacon, I guess in terms of loudness as well, just like receiving it. So we're going to go to audio output setting, click on that, and then we're going to go to multiplex, and we're going to go to 12, um, 2200. You can see that I have another radio, it says right here, it would be good to have another radio so that you can listen to the tone when it's pumping it out, when it's transmitting. If you don't have another radio, you might borrow someone, someone's friend, another, you know, a friend's radio. Um, or um, because this video is more specific to the VX6, maybe um, you get, you know, maybe with the settings that you see in this video will help you. Okay, so the so I have a frequency that uh, nobody's using, don't use APRS frequency. That's not very good. And, and what else? I'll put the volume here to about half. Uh, the volume here is still, what, two or two notches, right? I think it was two notches, let's see. Yeah, two notches, two notches still. All right, uh, okay, I think that's, that's all we have. So when I click, when I click on transmit, this will turn red because I'm telling the modem to transmit out. And of course it's coming back here. Before I do anything though, one very important thing is um, they, if you read the instructions, it says to do a dummy load and stuff um, and then put this in low power. We're doing the VX6 to change the power. You're going to click on the FW button and then the internet button, this button here. So this one and this one, I got low two. No, I don't want low two. I don't want low three. Do it again. I don't want high either. And I want low. That's what we want. Okay. So we got to put it in low. 
Again, this is more closely associated with the Yesu VX6. All right. And then I put the frequencies correctly, right? They're both at the same. They're FM. Um, this is blinking twice. Yes. Okay. Let's, so when it transmits, we're going to have to adjust the audio gain and see if we hear a difference. All right. Let's find out. It's going to be pretty hard to hear. Well, maybe you can hear it. We'll find out. I don't hear a difference. I've tried that a couple of times. I'm just going to keep it at, uh, I think the default is 64. Okay. I did not hear a difference. And the audio output twist should be at 50. Okay. I think uh, we're, oh, by the way, I, did, I, don't, I don't know if you saw this when I was transmitting. You see that both of these are red. It says it's transmitting and also the radio. That's a good thing because now we know that when I click on transmit, the, the modem, the TNC, is like cooperating and so is the radio. This connection seems to be working. This unit is controlling the radio. Okay, so that looks good. And we're going to go back. And the next important thing, super important, is you need to click on save as you're, you know, moving forward. Save will tell the uh, TNC, hey, save these settings. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. All right, the next thing we want to do is the KISS parameters. Okay, so uh, TX delay should be at 33. These are the recommended values. Persistence at 64. Time slot at 10. If you need to change them, use the add or subtract numbers. And then go back to configure. And then you can always save. Okay, then uh, we're ready to use, um, to use APRS FI. So we're going to click here to disconnect. And then let's go to uh, APRS FI. Let's see if we can configure that. Okay, so make sure that this is turned on, right? Make sure it's blinking slowly. It will. It means that it's not connected to the phone or in Bluetooth. Okay, great. I'm going to move the radio out of the way. I'm going to set it at APRS, let it, so I can look at the beacons, put it out of the way. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type 144390, that's the APRS in this neighborhood. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to put an outdoor antenna. I think the reception will be better. Okay, well, let's do that. Okay, that's a Comet uh, GP3 out there. Really nice antenna. I did a video on that too. Check it out. Well, not really. I did the cable that comes into the house. All right. Let's see, let's turn this on. Make sure that's is that blinking. It is. Okay, great. All right. <clears throat> yeah, that's a lot of steps, isn't it? But eventually, you'll get the hang of it. Outside antenna, better than than uh, rubber ducky antenna, especially if the antenna is um, horizontal, not vertical, right? And you can see it's accepting some packets, or well, the radio is listening to some packets, right? All right, so let's uh, quit this. Let's go to settings. Go to Bluetooth. Uh, there it is, TNC3. Let's connect it. And so there should be some handshaking going on, saying hello. I don't know how Bluetooth works really that way. There's probably no handshaking. Okay, we're going to quit that. We're going to run APRS. And it seems like every time I do that, it looks like it's going around the world. Let's click on more. TNC, and we are connected. Look at that. 
Wow, <laughs> that's pretty neat, isn't it? Um, you might have to search for it. Uh, let's let's disconnect, right? You might have to search for available TNCs. And there it is. You see that? And now it's connected. And when this turns green, it brings in the packet. Isn't that cool? That turns green and so, so does that. So the packet is coming in. It's going in here. Apparently it's sounding okay coming in. And then it, if the packet is read right, all the information is there. Crazy, right? And if you listen to the packet, it sounds like those old school modems. Like, you know, um, all that noise is able to be translated. All that information in the air. Okay, but we're not done yet. Uh, we go to Beacon. And time since transmit. Okay, I don't remember transmitting yet. Beacon, your position. That's important. Beacon via network. No, we don't want that. Beacon via TNC. Yes. So we're in the beacon section. Uh, here's my um, position and such. Uh, station. You might have to change the station if you're using um, APRS uh, .fi. You might have to change that because if you're using like a, like I'm using a um, an FT3D, you know, that's minus seven and it's working right now. So this unit will be minus four. And if you click on any of these things, it might ask you, hey, you should log in. So make sure you have a APRS FI account before you do this. Uh, yes, you do have to pay for the, um, the app, unfortunately. A space, a space shuttle symbol. And over here, I put a comment, APRS with Yesu VX6. It says to transmit the altitude, that's cool. And a packet, a wide one, wide one one, wide two one. That's just the way it's, you know, it bounces from the Jupiter to iGate and so forth. Uh, minimum transmit level, I put in a minute, so it can transmit in after a minute. I don't think it does auto transmit if you do know if it uh, transmit auto, please tell me. And I don't ambiguity position. I think that's, you know, if how, you know, like, uh, you know, you don't want to tell everybody exactly where you are. Well, you can put that, I guess. Okay. So let's try beacon now. When I press beacon now, I should get a red. Um, LED and a red LED and hopefully it transmits it to uh, the outside world to an eye gate. Let's do it. Aha, it did, but did it receive, did the eye gate receive it? And I'm looking at my FT3D. I don't know. Let's search. Ah, look at that. KN6BST minus four or SSI, SSID, uh, um, four, 19 seconds. Yes, 19 seconds ago, it transmitted. So here it gives you latitude, longitude. It looks like I'm going 14 miles per hour. That's not true. Altitude, distance, bearing, location, south gate, APR station, space shuttle. And if you were looking at this, wait a minute, it has, ah, okay. <clears throat> if uh, on the iPad, it looks a little bit different. It gives you side by side. And then if you go to the map, uh, there's a space shuttle right there. So anybody that clicks on it, now we'll see APRS with Yesu VX6. Isn't that cool? That's pretty neat. <clears throat> and then if you, wow, look at that. <laughs> this is, this is um, this is this is very unique, and I really and I really appreciate this very much. I'm I'm really proud of this. Um, and look at look at this is Southern California, right? L. A. And I'm in the center of a whole bunch of people transmitting 
you know, not many people around me do ham radio. And we, we got to change that. Um, well, that's a different story. But anyway, that's pretty neat, right? So what you can do, and I can't remember, I think, is it the arrow down here? No, that's centering. Is it the paper here? No, that's changing. Could be the funnel. Yes, the funnel. So you can say, you can display the information from the network or from the TNC, right? And then you can go back to map. And now you only have a few things coming in through TNC. Less cluttered. Um, and then you can, you know, you could be work. So, so maybe you want to do TNC maybe because you're driving in your car and you want to see those things that have been active recently. And then maybe one of them has information, right? No one is coming. It's up to us. That's interesting, right? And then you can read that. Apparently you can also find people that will say, Hey, this is the channel that I'm listening to. Like this car, look at this car right here. I wonder if they're driving anywhere. I have no idea what that says. Info. Hmm. Has more information. I don't know. I'm still learning. Um, that's my space shuttle right there. Wow, that is pretty neat, right? It's still communicating. Um, this turns green. That means some data is coming in. Um, all the packets are being read here. Three seconds ago, I got a packet. Zero seconds. Wow. I'm really happy. Um, can this work if, if it's in um, uh, no network at all? I don't know yet. Uh, I think you can use like almost any device, right? Um, that's not connected to the internet. As long as there's Bluetooth, you're able to look at the display. A couple of things though I would like is, can I send messages? And I don't think uh, APRS does that. Uh, all these package, packets are now coming in. And you can see more data is coming in. Now I wanna talk about some of the setbacks I had um, setting up the TNC3. And hopefully this will help you in your troubleshooting. The first thing was the disconnection of the Bluetooth to the unit. Uh, when I finished configuring uh, the TNC3, when I turned it off, it turns off the Bluetooth. So when I went to APRS IF, uh, it didn't work because the Bluetooth isn't, well, or wasn't it turned on. So make sure that you see the blinking LED light that flashes twice, blue, you should be ready to go. Uh, the cable. Cable is really important. Uh, I've had several issues with cables, audio cables, and if they don't have the right ring type um, or even the correct orientation, I guess, of, of the different uh, rings, if that's not correct, the radio won't work. If you do have one of these cables that are less expensive, please let us know. Uh, one of the cool things about uh, mobile linked ver or the ones that they sell, it's threaded. So when you put it into the radio, when you, when you thread it into the radio, it won't you know, come off very easily. Uh, the power button. Power button on the uh, TN, <laughs> TNC3, uh, it's pretty delicate. So a lot of the times when I was trying to put the radio with the unit together, um, you know, I was accidentally turning it off or it bumped into the, into the switch. And so if you're going to put this with a rubber band or something, um, just make sure it doesn't turn off when you put it in your bag. That's going to be very important. Uh, saving the settings. So when you're using your app, make sure you save the settings because if you don't, you'll find out that it's not configured and it's not ready to go. The squelch. That's another thing. Uh, the VX6 has two types of squelch. I will be putting the uh, videos on how to change the RF squelch 
and the regular squelch. Um, pretty straightforward. That needs to be adjusted. Okay, so those are kind of the thing. I, there must have been a few more things that I had to go through to figure out. But those were kind of like the main ones that were a little bit frustrating. The next few ones, or yeah, the next few ones that I'm going to talk about are more specific to APRS in general. If you've never used APRS before, then um, you're going to be in a, uh, in a very fantastic world because APRS is, is, is you know, you got to fine tune it sometimes to make it work. And it's a little complicated because there's a lot of things going on, especially if you have a, an FT3D and try to set it, set it up. Setting up is easy if somebody shows you, if you're just beginning. Um, it's a little challenging. It's a little overwhelming, but not impossible. But um, for the, the VX6, there is a button right there in the corner, the internet button, the start button. That start button, uh, if you press it, you'll see the symbol on the screen. If you have that symbol, just press the button to get rid of that symbol. Because with that symbol on, when you beacon something, it, it's going to beep. It's going to beep and then, and then send the beacon, <laughs> uh, which sounds like a modem. Well, it's when it goes to the digipeter or it goes to the eye gate, it's like, what is this? I don't know what this is. I'm not going to do anything with it. So that button is an, it's called the internet button uh, used for DTMF. So you might want, make sure that's not on. Okay. So when you're doing uh, APRS, uh, you know, being inside the home um, is, you know, probably not a good idea. It might not work. Now, if you have an antenna, like the one that I have on the wall, the um, Dr. Fong antenna, which is basically a J-pole, um, that one seems to be working pretty well. Uh, it's, a, it's a little more robust. Um, so if you're if you're using the radio inside with the duck with the rubber ducky uh, and you're not transmitting your packets it might be that so you might consider that um, another thing you should consider if you know your packets are being released and you're like wondering what is going on you might want to listen to them listen to the packet get another radio see if you can hear that that packet being released that's how I found that you know um, I had accidentally pressed the start button, the internet button, because I had a beep, it made that kind of weird sound, modem sound. So listening to your packets might help. Uh, and then one thing that you need to really be aware of is that uh, there's a lot of interference in the home. I have um, um, a microphone that uh, apparently the wire is not shielded very well and will interfere with the radio. If I put the radio very near to the computer, it also makes a lot of interference. If, if there's a lot of interference when it's sitting on the beacon, it's not very clear, so it's not going to work. Uh, also in the car, if you're in the car um, and it doesn't work, it might be because of the electric system that's creating some interference with the radio. And there's, again, there's, there's probably a lot more things to consider when setting this up, uh, please, uh, you know, put your um, troubleshooting tips in the description. It would be great if we can create a little community, figure out how your radio is doing. That would be cool, uh, you know, because these radios are awesome. Uh, they're durable. Uh, this one was my first radio uh, when I sent my first message. So it's really special if uh, you like this video please uh, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe and I hope uh, this was useful if you have any questions leave them on the description on the uh, comments below and I hope you have a great day and then be safe all right bye bye